Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay, this is the last session of this week. I know that we are not working on Friday, but you know, this is like um, the compensation of the day that I didn't uh, be here with you. So we're going to work on the topic that we were developing yesterday. So we are going to continue with the information. I know that it's kind of long and it's kind of uh, tiring to be like listening that information, but you know that this kind of information is very important for us uh, because you are not just going to solve some uh, statements or uh, some exercises. You need to know different information to improve your um, language skills um, with this kind of information. So in this case, we are going to continue with the information that we have yesterday. And as I was saying, uh, we have like the second part of this uh, topic. And in this case, we are going to talk about the recapitulation of the topic in which we are going to have a table. Um, we are going to have the information on that table. And then we are going to see a lot of examples um, related to this topic and we are going to have like two kind of examples and then we are going to uh, talk about the quantifiers with countable and uncountable nouns and some examples related to that information. So in this case we have a couple of information but it is not too long. It's kind of a short information. So we are going to begin with the information that I have for today, because you know that we just have one hour to complete this information. And uh, we are going to uh, to complete this uh, section uh, or this uh, session, and we are going to end with the second week. So we are just going to have two more weeks to complete this uh, course. So in this case, we are in the middle of this uh, course. So we have like very short time to complete all the information that we have there on the platform. So in this case, you know that uh, on the platform, we have a little information and we have some exercises, some examples, but we need to, to um make this information kind of longer to understand better what is the the meaning of this kind of information and why it is important for us to learn this kind of information es importante que sepamos también para qué se utiliza verdad cuál es la importancia de estos temas y es por eso que tratamos de eh, ampliar esa información no simplemente decir ah voy a responder dos preguntas y ya no, sino es también ampliar esa información para saber de qué trata todo esto y que lo podamos incluir a nuestro vocabulario. So, this um, is the information that we had yesterday that is related to the three categories of quantifiers that we have. And in this case, we were talking about the neutral um, Quantifiers, then we were talking about the large um, quantity quantifiers. And the last part was the uh, small quantity quantifiers. Teníamos tres, el neutral, eh, los quantifiers que se utilizan para eh, cantidades grandes. Y también tenemos los que se utilizan para cantidades pequeñas. That is the last thing that we have on the document. Now, we are going to continue with the recapitulation. That is uh, almost the last part of this topic. And in this recapitulation, we are just going to have a table. 
vamos a tener nada más una tabla de, eh, de los usos de los quantifiers más comunes. Nada más vamos a, a ver la tabla como una recapitulación de lo que ya habíamos visto en la primera parte. So, in this case, I'm going to add here the, eh, the table. So, in that case, you are going to see some uh, usage of the different quantifiers. So, in this case, is recapitulation. So we're going to have the table here, but I guess, yes, we have a space. We have four and four. Okay, we have here this table. And we are going to begin with the categories. In this case, we have neutral. Then we have large quantity. And we have a small quantity. Esto es lo mismo que estábamos viendo ayer, solo que en este caso va a ser más corto y es nada más una recapitulación. So, in this case, we have affirmative. Next one is negative. And then we have interrogative. So, what we're going to do right now is to write the words that are part of every um, category and also which words are part of the, um, the positive, the negative, and even the interrogative is, is statements. Aquí vamos a hacer nada más um, poner las palabras que corresponden a cada una de las, de las partes. ¿Qué palabras vamos a utilizar con afirmativos, oraciones afirmativas? ¿Qué palabras vamos a utilizar para hacer oraciones negativas y qué palabra vamos a utilizar para lo que es las preguntas o las interrogativas. So in this case with neutral quantifiers we have the following words. We have some, several, a number of, and enough. For negative statements, we have any and also enough. For interrogative, we have any, again, and again, enough. For large quantity, we have numerals. Plenty of, a lot of, lots of, and too many. For negative, we have much, many, too many. Four questions, we have much, many, and too many. And for a small quantity, we have few, a few, little, and a little. And in this case, we don't have uh, words for negative statements and if for question we don't have any word because we were saying yesterday that this kind of um, words are not going to be used in a negative or an interrogative statement solo para las afirmativas few, a few, little and a little solo lo vamos a encontrar 
en oraciones positivas. So that's why we are not like um, using this or we don't have any words that are for uh, the negative and interrogative forms, just for affirmative. So in this case, it's the same information that we were like um, listening yesterday. In this case, um, we just have the words here. It's uh, easier to have the information in this kind of um, like parts of the document because you are going to find the words in this table and it is easy for you to uh, find this kind of example of the words that you can use. So we are going to talk about a little bit um, about the words, a few, few, little, and a little. So in this case, we're going to understand what is the difference between those expressions and in which cases we are going to use few, a few, little, and a little. We are going to see some examples and then we are going to continue with examples of every category or in this case, many, more, much, few, fewer, different kind of examples. So we are going to begin with few or a few and little or a little. So it says that the difference between the two expressions in, ke in each phrase is purely one of meaning, not of usage. Without the article, few and little have the meaning of not much, not many, and possibly less than one might hope for or expect. These expressions have a negative value to them. With the article, a few and a little have the meaning of at least some, perhaps more than one might expect. Um, these expressions have a positive value. Básicamente, ¿cuál es la diferencia entre few or a few and little or a little? es que cuando no le escribimos el artículo, o sea, cuando solo estamos utilizando few, en little tiene una connotación negativa y podemos traducirlo, ¿verdad? Más que todo, tal vez diciendo no mucho y posiblemente menos de lo que podríamos esperar. Y cuando tenemos eh, con el, bueno, el uso del artículo, que es... Um, el a o el n, pero en este caso solo estamos utilizando a, a few and a little es una connotación positiva y puede traducirse como por lo menos algo, quizás más de lo que había esperado. Entonces el otro es como, ah, es menos de lo que yo hubiera creído que era y el otro es más de lo que yo creía o de lo que yo esperaba. But I'm going to write here the uh, specification of this one.
Okay, in this case, I'm going to mark here. This one that is the meaning of this one. So we're going to mark here. In which you can see that we are expecting less than the um, things that we have. Entonces, en ese tenemos nuestra eh, connotación negativa, que es como el que ya les, eh, como ya les explicaba, que en este caso, pues, lo estamos utilizando de esta forma y no estamos esperando mucho, ¿verdad? Para poder eh, darle a este sentido. Era como que no teníamos mucha fe en este caso de la situación. So that's uh, why we have the negative connotation. Now, we are going to see the other meaning of the use of the article. Now, with the article, a few and a little have the meaning So we have here the meaning of this one. So we are going to mark here. I'm going to do it with yellow. Okay, in this case, like uh, making some examples or to understand better this one, when you are using the first words, um, just little and few, maybe <clears throat> you are not expecting almost anything. Porque estamos diciendo no mucho y posiblemente menos de lo que podríamos esperar. Maybe in this case, you are hoping to have two or three coins, for example, and you go look in, in your wallet and you have just one coin. Tal vez estamos esperando tener eh, dos o tres monedas en nuestra cartera, pero vamos y revisamos si solo nos aparece una. Entonces, en esa situación es cuando utilizamos el few and a little because we are expecting um, or we have like an idea and we have less than the idea that we have. And in the second one, when we are using the article, you are expecting to have just one coin, but when you go to your a wallet, you found maybe um, like two more coins or maybe, um, I don't know, something else. En el, en el caso de a little and a few, puede que esperemos nosotros tener menos y al final tenemos un poco más de lo que nosotros creeríamos, como el caso de las monedas. Pensábamos que solo teníamos una y nos encontramos eh, quizás un dólar o un billete de cinco dólares. Entonces, eh, en ese caso, pues es una connotación eh, positiva. We are going to see the examples. And in this one, we have the 
The first one said, few or my friends, few of my friends were there. So I was disappointed. Aquí tenemos a um, pocos de mis amigos o algunos de mis amigos estaban allí. Así que yo estaba decepcionado, ¿verdad? Porque no llegaron todos los que yo creía que iban a llegar. Next one. Um, a few of my friends were there, so I was quite happy. That is like the contrary of the first one. A few of my friends were there. So I was quite happy. Imagínense lo que una sola letra puede hacer. En este caso estamos utilizando un artículo. Y el simple uso del artículo nos cambia la forma en la que nosotros percibimos esta idea. En el primero decimos un par de mis amigos. Algunos de mis amigos estaban allí. Así que yo estaba decepcionado, triste, enojado, molesto. Y luego al cambiarle y agregarle el artículo, a few of my friends were there, so I was quite happy. Algunos de mis amigos o varios de mis amigos estaban ahí, así que estaba un poco feliz. Hurry up, there is little time left. Hurry up. There's little time left. Apúrate, hay poco tiempo, nos queda poco tiempo. We have a little Time to spare. So let's stop and have a cup of coffee. Okay, in this case, it's the same. We change the connotation of the statement. Apúrate, no tenemos tanto tiempo. Hay muy poco tiempo de sobra. O sea, estamos justos, no podemos hacer nada más. Y en la última, we have a little time to spare, so let's stop and have a cup of coffee. Tenemos eh, un poco de tiempo para malgastarlo, para gastar, para detenernos y tomarnos una taza de café. Quiere decir que tenemos suficiente tiempo. So we are going to see extra examples. We are going to see more examples. So we are going to see these other examples. And we have here that these expressions show the speaker attitude towards the quantity he or she is referring to. A few is for countable nouns and little is for uncountable nouns. And they are describing the quantity in a positive way. Entonces, vamos a hablar de la actitud que tiene el hablante sobre la cantidad que ella o él se está refiriendo. Y también a few lo vamos a utilizar con los nombres contables y a little lo vamos a utilizar con nombres no contables que describen la cantidad de una forma positiva.
So here we have the examples. And we have the first one. I've got a few friends. I've got a few friends. And this one can be maybe not many, but enough. Okay. Tengo un par de amigos. Tal vez no son muchos, pero son suficientes. Me llevo bien con ellos. Me la paso bien con ellos. That's why it's very important for, for me to uh, like to see or to have this uh, group of friends. Next one. I've got a little money. And maybe this could mean I got not, I got enough to live on. Tengo suficiente dinero. Tengo un poco de dinero. Puede significar que tenemos suficiente dinero para eh, vivir o para mantenernos un tiempo. So in this case, uh, we can have this kind of uh, translation or to understand that um, la, like that kind of examples. Now we have few and little. In this case, it is not related to the use of the article. In this case, it's just few and a little. And in this case, remember that this one describe the quantity in a negative way. They are like comparatives and hold a relative pos position on a scale of increase or decrease. And in this case, we have increase, so que sube, from zero to 100. And we have with plural countable nouns. We have here many, more, and must. Then we have with uncountable nouns. Uh, 
I'm going to move this one here. We have much, more, and must. Now, in decrease, Baba Hando. From 100 to zero. With plural countable nouns. View. Fewer and fewest. With uncountable nouns. Little, less, and least. So in this case, it's related to two, um, Podemos decir lo que se trata del incremento, ¿verdad? De lo que nosotros estamos explicando o cuando va bajando, ¿verdad? Lo que estamos explicando, la cantidad que estamos explicando. Por eso es que aparece el incremento del 0 al 100 y el, eh, o cuando va bajando del 100 al 0. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos y estamos a punto de terminar este tema. Then we are going to see something related to the platform and I think we are going to be uh, done with this session. So we are going to end this topic with examples and some other things and then we are going to go to the platform. So in this case, it says there there are many people in Poland. More in India, but the most people live in China. Aquí es donde vamos a ver cómo vamos incrementando la cantidad. Dice que hay muchas personas en Polonia, más en la India, pero donde hay más personas es en China. So in this case, we are talking about from zero to 100. In this case, we are talking about a quantity that is kind of short, kind of little, and then we are going to go up with these kind of um, quantities. Empezamos de una cantidad poca hasta una gran cantidad. Next one. Much time and money. Much time and money is spent on education. More on health. But the mass is spent on national defense. Few rivers in Europe aren't polluted. Few rivers fewer people die young now than in the nineteenth century.
the country with the fewest people per square kilometer must be Australia. Scientists have little hope of finding a complete cure for cancer before 2010. She had less time to study than I did, but had better results. And the last one, give that dog the least opportunity and it'll, it will bite you. Okay, in this case, we have here some examples of the use of this kind of quantifiers depending on the degree. Aquí depende de cómo lo vamos a utilizar. Si va de más a, um, de menos a más o de más a menos. Y ahí tenemos varios ejemplos de cómo podemos eh, incluirlos en una misma oración. And now, give me a moment. I'm going to add something here. Um, it's an image that is like a review of this topic, but in a different way. So I'm going to add this image to the, to the document right now because I want to show you what is this image about. So give me a moment. Okay, I'm going to show you the image. I'm going to put the image here. Yes, this one. Okay, we have here this image that is talking about the quantifiers, but also is saying what is the difference between a pirate and a teacher? ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre un pirata y un maestro? And we have the rules. We have also uh, the use of the quantifiers. And we are like giving some examples related to the pirates and the teacher. 
So in this case, we're just going to read the rules for this one. And we have here, some plus uncountable nouns and plural countable nouns in positive sentences. Any plus uncountable nouns and plural countable nouns in questions and negative sentences. A few plus countable nouns, not many, but enough. A little uncountable nouns, not much, but enough. Few plus countable nouns, not many, almost none, not enough. Little plus uncountable nouns, almost nothing, not enough. A lot of plus plural countable nouns and uncountable in positive sentences. Much plus uncountable nouns is mostly used in questions and negations. And many plus plural countable nouns is mostly used in questions and negative. Ahí tenemos las reglas, cómo lo vamos a utilizar. Some, any, a few, few, little, a lot of, much and many. ¿Con qué tipo de nombre lo vamos a utilizar? Si contable o no contable. ¿Y qué eh, significa o cómo lo podemos utilizar? Now, quantifiers used with countable nouns are the parent. And quantifiers used with uncountable nouns as, are the teacher. And then we have the first one. <clears throat> The pirate has some room in the fridge. The pirate doesn't use any shampoo. The pirate smokes a little tobacco every day. The pirate knows little English. He can speak with foreigners. Um, the pirate has a lot of gold. The pirate doesn't drink much milk. Now, the teacher has some books on the shelf. The teacher doesn't know any pirate song. The teacher has a few pair of glasses. The teacher knows few bad words. She can argue with hooligans. The teacher has a lot of nice students. And the teacher doesn't have many diamonds. So in that case, you can have like... um. A very short information, but you are going to understand better the information that we have about the quantifiers. A través de esta imagen es para que les quede claro, ¿verdad? Los usos de los quantifiers, en qué casos y en qué tipo de oraciones lo podemos utilizar. So in that case, that's why I am like adding this kind of information or this kind of images to the document. Now, I'm going to go to the platform. But give me a moment. Let me see if I can get to the to the platform because I don't know if it is working. Mm -hmm. No, that is not the one that I need. Okay, it's kind of, we can say, um, it is not charging, so give me a moment. I'm going to try to enter the platform. Okay. We are in section three. Uh -huh.
We are just going to see the video. That is the last video of the section three. And then we are going to read the article. And that is going to be the last part of this course. I mean, of this uh, session. So we are going to see this one as a, a reminder of the information. So in this case, we are just going to listen some information. Oh, I didn't share the, the sound. So give me a moment again and again. Okay, so we are just going to listen this kind of information. Hello to all of you. In this session, we will take a look at quantifiers to ask questions and give our answers. Get ready to listen and take notes if you need to. Quantifiers. How many and how much? Count nouns. Are there many restaurants? Yes, there are a lot. Yes, there are a few. No, there aren't many. No, there aren't any. No, there are none. How many restaurants are there? There are 10 or 12. Non-count nouns. Is there much crime? Yes, there's a lot. Yes, there's a little. No, there isn't much. No, there isn't any. No, there's none. How much crime is there? There's a lot of street crime. We can say that when nouns in question are count nouns, we can answer using a lot, a few, many, any, none. This will depend on how many there really are. Remember, a lot is a big amount and none is nothing. When nouns in question are non-count nouns, we can use a lot, a little, much, any, none. Remember that when we talk about non-count nouns, both questions and answers are singular. Okay, there we have the last part of the information related to the quantifiers. Now we are just going to read a little bit the last article that we have on this section. I know that this one is um is for this one and you are completed this exercise, but you're just going to read this information and we are going to like analyze a little bit what is in this in this article. So in this case, we are talking about the word on, in one neighborhood. So in this case, we were talking about a specific place and we're going to read a little bit. So in this case, I'm going to read this article and I'm going to give you my ideas about this, um, this specific neighborhood. So it says that the sidewalks are crowned with Indian women in colorful traditional dress. A woman on the corner is selling Chinese cakes. A new song from a Romanian band is playing in a restaurant. Is it India, China, Romania? No, it's Astoria, a neighborhood in Queens, New York City. Astoria was once a mostly Greek neighborhood, but the area is changing fast. New residents from India, Pakistan, Thailand, China, and all over the United States are moving in. The new residents bring many traditions. These traditions blend together to make Astoria truly multicultural. When people are surrounded with different cultures, they adopt the things that they like, says one resident. Here in Astoria, it isn't surprising that an Indian woman buys Mexican tortillas from a Korean grocery store. It's one of the things that make um, the neighborhood is special. It isn't surprising that, As that Astoria is becoming a very popular place to live. The rents are reasonable and the neighborhood is safe and it has very good public transportation. There are inexpensive stores, many nice restaurants and good fresh fruit and vegetables. Um, vegetable markets. And Astoria is a comfortable place to live Apartments are usually big and roomy, as one longtime resident said. 
Why live anywhere else? Astoria has it all. So this is a very interesting place in which we can like find a lot of different multicultural things. So in this case, when we are talking about something related to a culture, we can think about food, we can think about a music, we can think about um, clothes, we can think about movies, books, games, different things. And if you can notice that uh, in this place we have like very, or a lot of different uh, people, we can think about our country at the same time. You know that here in El Salvador, we have uh, different places that has a lot of people that are from uh, other countries, other nationalities, other culture. And we can like uh, adopt different things related to the culture of these people um maybe uh when we are talking with different people uh, we can think about the words that they are using even in this case we adopt the language of other countries and the first country that we are going to uh, talk about in this case is a uh, u.s Cuando hablamos de adaptarnos o de eh, adoptar diferentes eh, cosas relacionadas con otras eh, culturas o con otros idiomas, lo primero que hacemos nosotros es adaptar nuestro idioma y agregarle palabras nuevas. Y lo hemos hecho mucho, ¿verdad? Con el inglés. Ahora ya decimos algunas frases, algunas palabras para referirnos a algunas situaciones y ahí estamos adaptando nuestro idioma a otros idiomas. También la, el estilo de vestimenta, eh, la comida que consumimos es parte de este cambio cultural que podemos nosotros tener o adoptar de otros países. And in this case, it's related to this article that we are reading in which we can say that here in El Salvador, we have the same thing. We can adapt different cultures. We can adapt uh, different languages or different things. And we can make another uh, thing with this language or with this uh, information. Maybe we can like see what is the style of clothes, for example, in other country. And we can uh, make something with that kind of clothes. We can make a new um, kind of using different, uh, I don't know, shirts, uh, oversized clothes or different things. You know that in this case, like uh, we need to adapt to the new things that are coming. And here in El Salvador, we can find different uh, people from different countries that are living here and if we can like talk with those people we can um understand better their culture um we can also try to eat the food that are from different countries and maybe we are doing it with mm, breakfast uh or with lunch uh, we are adapting our a food to the other cultures. And maybe you see um, something on internet and you want to try to eat that, that kind of food. So that's why we are talking about Astoria that is a very interesting place in which we can find uh, people from different countries, from India, China, Romania, and different countries. And they have like, um, or they are mixing different things, as they say in this part. It is not surprising that an Indian woman buys Mexican tortillas from a Korean grocery. En esa eh, parte, en ese pequeño párrafo, estamos viendo eh, la mezcla, verdad, tan grande de culturas que hay en ese lugar, ya que dice que no es sor eh, algo de sorprenderse que podamos encontrar a una persona de la India comprando tortillas mexicanas en una tienda de Corea del Sur. So that's why it is like very um, 
full of things, this kind of places. Now, in this case, we just need to uh, find the different categories or the different ideas related to this article and this exercise. And in this case, you just mark the, the things that you can find in a story. And we have a list of things that we can find there. Then I know that many of you have completed the midterm. That is the last part for this week. And you have just uh, some parts. In this case, you have just five. The first one is a listening. The second one is a conversation. The third one is the correct answer. The number four is rewrite uh, the scramble sentences. And the last one is a reading. So in this case, I know that many of you have completed this part. And also I know that there are uh, some of you that um, maybe have completed the course. And that's perfect. You are doing a great job. Sé que algunos de ustedes o, la, o muchos de ustedes ya completaron el curso completo, creo, y también van muy adelantados con los ejercicios. Esa es una cosa muy buena porque en este caso solo hacemos review de los temas que aparecen en la plataforma y ustedes ya han avanzado con sus ejercicios. Entonces, in this case, it's just to eh, learn some information related to the different topics. Now, we're going to end this session because it's time. And also, we are going to see each other um, on Monday because uh, we are going to have our um, session on Monday. And I hope that we have like the same uh, days, like the four days uh, without the Friday because it is kind of weird to have uh, this session on Friday. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night and have a really good weekend. See you next week. See you, teacher. Thanks, see you. teacher. Thanks yeah, to you. Good see you. Good night.